So a while back, one of the astrophotography channels that I've been watching to learn the whole hobby is Luke Omatico. Luke put out a video showing how you could take a one-shot color image, so something that you shot in color from your DSLR or from your mirrorless camera or from an astronomy camera for that matter, showed you how to take that image, break it out, and create a fake Hubble palette look for your image. I thought it was really cool. You don't have to shoot in monochrome with the special filters to get a similar look. Maybe it's not exact, but it looked really good. So I was very intrigued by it. I followed his process and the image came out pretty cool. So I've been playing with the development versions of Cyril, which included additional functionality to their scripting engine. A lot of the functionality was not in 1.0.6, the current stable release, but since they released the new beta version of 1.2, it has all the commands that I need in it to be able to successfully run this script. So I have put together a automated script that runs from within Cyril that has been based off of the steps that Luke outlined in his video to get that Hubble, that fake Hubble palette look. So that's what this video is about today. So the first thing is, is you do need to be running the beta version of Cyril 1.2. Second, Luke, if you're watching, I know you're probably not, but you're the inspiration for this one. Great video and everybody watching, I'll leave a link to that video that Luke put out a while back so you can go and check that out. I automated some of his processes. I couldn't automate all of them because some of them actually require human interaction. There's no way to tell a script to be able to determine what the background is and what the DSO object is. Um, stuff like that. This isn't a magic script that's going to process the whole thing for you. It's just going to get you to the point where you've got that palette to work with, that Hubble type palette to work with. You'll still need to go through and split out, split out your stars if that's what you do first. Do your post-processing, like saturation, maybe stretching it a little bit more, a little bit less. So it's just to get you to that first step to get the, those color channels rearranged the way that Luke did in his video. So let's get to it. My name is Rich, this is Deep Space Astro. Okay, as I mentioned, in order for the script to work, you need to download and install Zero 1.2.0 Beta 1 in order for this to work. So I'll leave the link in the description for the downloads page on Zero. This is the version that you want. You just click here and then whichever OS you're on, I'm doing Windows, download the 64-bit version and go ahead and install it. It will uninstall your current version of Cyril on Windows anyways. If at any point you wanna go back to 1.0.6, simply uninstall the beta version first and then come back here and download 1.0.6 and you can reinstall it. It is in beta, so there are some bugs that have been reported so far, but nothing that's a showstopper. Um, again, it's beta, so there's gonna be issues sometimes. Once you have this downloaded and installed, then go over to my OneDrive account. I'll leave this link in the description. It'll show you DSA Hubblematic.ssf. DSA is for I know. Anyway, so click your download button. Um, download it into your downloads folder or wherever you prefer. Once it's done, go to your downloads folder, right click, cut, and then you want to browse to the scripts directory for Cyril. So C drive, program files, Cyril, scripts, and then paste. You may get a message saying that you require administrative rights to do this. If so, go ahead and click yes. Now that it's in our scripts directory, it'll be available for us within Cyril. So we're gonna run Cyril now, and this script is intended to run against your result.fit file that is generated when you run the OSC pre-processing script. So just like I've covered in my beginner tutorial for Cyril, we wanna set our home directory first, so I'm going to choose my Rosette Nebula data that I have shot, click open, come up to scripts, and hit OSC preprocessing. Now if you already have a result.fit file that you want to run this against, that's fine. You can just open it up. I'm just going through it from start to finish to show you guys where we need to start at. So we'll let this finish and then we'll get back to it. Okay, the preprocessing script has completed. So we're going to come over to open. And one thing I want to point out with the beta version, it used to be in previous versions, our resulting file would be named result.fit. Now they've changed it, so it'll be named result underscore the number of seconds. So this is the total acquisition time of your light files. So in my case, 16,512 seconds. Just look for the file that's called result. Obviously, number of seconds are going to change based on how long you shot your object for. So 
double click the result file it'll open it up in linear just like always and before running the script you want to come out of linear go into auto stretch or histogram and you want to do a quick crop um, you don't have to do a quick crop but my script also runs a background extraction so if those sample points land on these artifacts that we have from stacking then it can kind of throw off the background extraction so we want to do a crop before we actually run the Hubblematic script uh, another new feature with the beta version it used to be if you're on the rgb tab you couldn't do a crop you couldn't work on the rgb it was only for visualization they've changed that so now we can work on our rgb tab so i'm just going to go ahead and do a quick crop to get these stacking artifacts out of the way right click and hit crop again before running the script come back out of auto stretch and go back into linear you can leave it in auto stretch but then it won't be a true representation because the script will do an auto stretch for you and if you're in auto stretch then an additional auto stretch for this preview will be applied as well so you won't get a true representation of what the image looks like when you save it out so do your crop make sure you go back into linear and then all you need to do is come up to scripts hit dsa hubblematic and just give it a few seconds it runs pretty quick you can watch it over on the right hand side there we go there's our fake hubble image i'm not going to go through all the post-processing steps that i would do normally uh, on the image that's not what this video is about it was just to show you guys the script um, but what i will show you that's helpful in in your post-processing if you've watched my beginner's tutorial you'll see that when i get to a certain point in the in the process I like to break out my stars and then work on the starless image uh, and I'm gonna do the same thing for that too after this video but I just wanted to show you one of the things that you can do is if you come in the image processing and come down to color saturation obviously you can increase your color saturation on a global scale right so if I drag this over the entire image is saturated if I put this back we'll just hit the reset button and pull the the menu down you can select colors that you want to apply saturation to so in this case i'm going to select the orange brown and yellow to try to bring out this golden rim around the rosette nebula so if you watch the image as i bump the slider over it is just saturating those colors and leaving everything else alone so i can bump that up a little bit hit apply to apply it and then the same thing with the other colors right color saturation if i want to try and pull in some of the blues and the magentas I can do that too and you can see that the center is getting that nice blue hue that we see in the Hubble palette all the time what you have to watch out for is let me go back down here to the middle is you know we're fo I'm focusing on here I want to pull out the blues but if you watch the stars as I do this the stars are being affected as well that's why I remove my stars before I start making these adjustments that way I can work just on the nebula and then put the stars back in um, after I'm finished but I just wanted to point that out for you guys so that'll help you kind of pull out the individual colors that you see in the image once this once the script is done um, so that's it quick and dirty uh, the other thing if you come back and you actually open up the script I've commented it out so it's it's hopefully it'll be pretty straightforward or what it's doing you can see it's it's really straightforward it's just issuing commands it's not doing any kind of analysis on your image or anything like that um, you know this first line is saying hey you need to run 01.2 because if you're not some of these commands are not available uh, this next one does our background extraction using the uh, radial basis function with a smoothing of 0.5 and I just played out laid down 10 samples then it removes green noise then it does the auto stretch then it splits out your red green and blue channels as separate files then it's building the composite just using the red and the green we're skipping the blue right per luke's manual instructions in his video he did not use the the blue channel to during his recomposition so luminance is red and then we got red red and green that's how we're getting to this final look that we're seeing once that's done it's loading that file which is what we're looking at now if you look up here in the top right corner in cyril you can see composed underscore lrgb that fit that's what this is doing right there doing another remove green noise and then i just have it bumping up the saturation so 
I'm pointing this stuff out not only so you guys understand what it's doing from a command line, which by the way, you could type all these commands down here in Cyril under the command line. But if for some reason, say you didn't want it to do a background extraction or you didn't want it to increase the saturation, all you need to do is come to the beginning of any of these lines and put in your, your hashtag symbol and then save it. And that hashtag symbol is telling Cyril ignore this command it'll skip right over it it won't run it so you can customize this a little bit if you guys want to so like i said it was just something fun to do i like to automate things uh whether it's my rig or stuff in processing or home automation whatever so it's just it's just my mindset uh, it's, it's fun to play with this kind of stuff i am going to go ahead and finish my processing and show you guys the end result. Hope you found the video at least interesting, if not also helpful. Give it a like, leave a comment, uh, suggestions. Just like always, let's have a conversation about this stuff. Thanks for everybody's time. We'll see you on the next video and clear skies.